So in today's video, I just wanted to go over some pros and cons, some winners and some losers, basically how I saw things play out at Pinball Expo 2023. First and foremost, I had an absolutely amazing time. I highly recommend everyone go to Pinball Expo. If you're a pinball fan, if you're in the area, if you're not in the area, definitely check it out. You'll get to play all sorts of amazing machines that you typically wouldn't have access to. I know I got to play lots of machines that I've never played before that was absolutely thrilling to me and exciting. There's even an opportunity to play some super rare and obscure titles. Uh, a couple that stood out to me was number one, Magic Girl. If you're not familiar with it, definitely Google it. It has a very tumultuous history as far as its creation and its existence. And they even had a new in-box one that you could purchase for the low, low price of $45,000. Also available to play was Hercules, the world's largest pinball machine, which is just a thing in itself. I mean, just for, you know, giggles, you have to experience it first and foremost. I mean, the pinball itself is actually a pool cue ball and it is as massive as you can possibly think and even standing next to it, you're still gonna be in awe of this machine. Does it play good? Is it a fun game? Not really, but just to say you've actually experienced the, you know, biggest pinball table of all time, you definitely gotta check out Hercules any chance you get. So of course all the major pinball manufacturers are represented we got to start at the top. Stern of course always has an amazing display and setup. Uh, they're always partnered with Marco Specialties and their display of course has this amazing behemoth venom mouth which is very inviting and scary and I absolutely love it. You know it's decorating 101 as far as how you market things and it's exceptionally well tied in to of course their current flagship title which would be Venom. Lots of those machines out there of course other machines they have available. They had James Bond, they had Deadpool, Foo Fighters, Godzilla, Avengers, you name it. And of course everything was set up with a leaderboard interactive for real time so everybody could play, score. Yours truly actually made it to one of those leaderboards. I uh, made it up to top 10 of James Bond, which is super fun. I'm a big fan of that game. Chicago Gaming Company had Pulp Fiction and Cactus Canyon out there on display for play. Pulp Fiction, this was the first time I actually got to experience and play Pulp Fiction. When it was first announced, I got super excited. Then I saw the actual reveal of the you know, machine itself and I was like, wait a minute, that's not really what I was hoping for. I was hoping for you know a modern LCD display with video assets from the movie and uh, a much more modernized new uh, pinball machine as a whole. What we got is basically new meets old, retro meets modern type of thing. And honestly, as much as I was disappointed when it first got revealed, I kind of changed my tune 100% after playing it. it. It's a fun game. I, obviously, it's got an old school retro layout, but it still feels like a modern uh, pinball machine as far as its assets. You've got speech call outs and everything that while you don't have the animations or clips from the movie or anything like that, you still do have the sound from the movie, the special effects, the the call outs of the actors themselves. So it still feels very modernized. Um, it shoots and feels flipper wise, very smooth, very quick, very tight shots. So I actually enjoyed playing this. I, like I said, I thought I was going to hate it when it was first revealed, but I've changed I've changed my tune on this after experiencing it firsthand. Really enjoyed Pulp Fiction for sure. Some other smaller companies out there, we had Pinball Brothers, they had Alien and Queen out there on display. First time I got to play either one of those machines. Queen was very fun, lots of great video, audio, and music packages obviously from the band. Um, very cool theming as far as the art and the design of the playfield. We got you know a guitar mini upper playfield which is really cool. Um, did have some issues with that one though. It was just hanging up a lot with their drop targets on the left hand side of the play field. Uh, I thought it was maybe an isolated incident so I stopped playing the machine, stepped over two machines to the left to see, okay, maybe that one's just, you know, a problem child. And no, kept having the same issue on a different machine and it didn't seem like it was coded to do any kind of ball search when the ball was hanging up um, on top of the drop targets. So that was, you know, a little bit concerning. These machines have been out for a little while and you know they're being sold for about $9,000 so a little rough around the edges. Alien much better experience overall and they even got their cheaper Ripley version out there um, which I think is about $8,000. Still expensive. Of course all machines are relatively expensive uh, obviously but um, a cheaper variation of their you know flagship Alien title that's already kind of been out there for a while. Uh, enjoyed them both. The Ripley version is very cool. Um, it seems like a very good value as well. Also, I was very impressed by Dutch Pinball's Big Lebowski pinball machine. We talk about integration of theme, they absolutely kill it. Um, the large DMD style display where it's got the actual video clips, but they're kind of, you know, dotted out to be displayed in a DMD fashion, which is really cool. 
um, theme integration, all the little callouts and movie assets, and just little tidbits on the playfield and the cabinet design and the bowling alley. I just they knocked it out of the park with the Big Lebowski. So if you're a fan of that movie, you'll absolutely love this machine, no doubt in my mind whatsoever. Also got to check out the entire catalog from American Pinball. That was a first for me. Previously, I'd only ever got to play Hot Wheels locally, but I got to play Oktoberfest, Houdini, Galactic Tank Force, and of course, their Legends of Valhalla. Enjoyed them all, I really did. I didn't have a single gripe about any of those machines as far as their gameplay. Um, all of them had really cool, unique layouts and shots, and I enjoyed them all. My biggest criticisms and concerns were maybe with Galactic Tank Force, some of the, the toys and the gadgets. Um, they're very clearly 3D printed, and when you're delivering you know, things at $8,000, $10,000 price points, it shouldn't look like a common person to print in their garage and put on the play field. It should be a little more refined if you personally ask me. It just feels like American Pinball is like this company that is this close to like breaking through and having that really cool successful smash hit. If you're on the fence about possibly going to Pinball Expo in the future, first and foremost, I'll tell you, get off that fence and just go because it's a phenomenal convention. Loads to see, loads to do. The volunteers, the employees, everybody that was running the convention themselves were ready, willing, and able to help people. Uh, there wasn't any kind of issue I saw with short staffing. They were super nice, super friendly. Thumbs up to the staff, the convention center itself. It's well lit, it's well spaced out. I mean, there was another convention going on at the same place and you know, two conventions colliding, you would think, oh my God, that's way too many people. But no, there was plenty of space, plenty of room. Even Saturday at the busiest times, the pinball convention center area was, you know, still adequate. You didn't feel like you were crammed in there shoulder to shoulder with everybody. You can buy a beer if you want. You can get food there. Everything is very accessible, clean restrooms. If you don't want to buy food, you can drive a mile away and go get fast food. It's it's very nice area. so. Definitely check it out because it's even got, you know, the hotel attached to it. You can go to your room or you can stay off site for, you know, maybe half the price somewhere else. It's only a mile away, kind of like what I'm doing right now. Either way, highly recommend it. Definitely want to give a special shout out to Adaptive Game Products. They had a booth set up. Basically, they had old machines, new machines, basically the whole entire gamut but they were offering accessibility products that would allow people to experience the joy of pinball with varying different accessibility controllers. So you had thumb button controllers, you had pedal controllers, um, you had adjusted pinball machines with restricted legs, smaller legs, you name it. Um, I thought that was an amazing way to be able to experience the joy of pinball that would unfortunately not be able to otherwise. So definitely shout out to those guys. They're doing the best kind of work out there and maybe you're one of those people that says, I like pinball, but maybe I don't love pinball. There was still plenty to see and do. You could go up to any of the vendors, find all sorts of crazy cool things, whether it be pinball related, retro video gaming. You name it, there was lots of cool modifications for pinball machines, of course. There was tournaments going on. There was retro video gaming tournaments, fighting game tournaments. Uh, me personally, I picked up two sheets of uh, Invisiglass from my machines at home. Don't have to pay shipping, drive them home. Uh, very excited to get those. I also got uh, Flippy here, bring home for the kiddo. Nice little plushie, even has little wires in his arms and legs to pose him, but you know, cute little mascot. Spooky Pinball was also there with their entire catalog. First time I got to check out the Scooby-Doo Pinball Machine. Really enjoyed it, but nothing really new from them other than chance and opportunity to play their machines. Now when it comes down to it, the winner and best of show, if you ask me personally, had to be Labyrinth. It had the biggest crowd buzz, the longest lines. Elton John from Jersey Jack was very impressive, but again, the winner of the day and the weekend for all of Pinball Expo had to be the Labyrinth Pinball from Barrels of Fun. And of course, all the glitters is not golden and there was a couple of head scratching, uh, just downright disappointing things that I did experience and see at the expo. One of them was a company called Pinball Adventures, smaller upstart company it had basically created two pinball machines. They had them there on display to play. One of the games, Punny Factory, did have some issues as far as when I played it. I gave it a couple of shots, but it kept having ball hangups and the ball would stop and there was no ball search and the person would have to take the glass and fix it and then it had the same issue again. Um, same kind of story on their other machine, I forget what it was called, but basically they 
Um, just had some design flaws that were really causing a lot of ball traps and you know things weren't coated correctly so there was a lot of taking the, the glass off to fix the machine if you will. Uh, one thing I thought was a little strange though, the, the punny factory one seemed to be playing a little loose with the, the lightness rights of uh, Don Knotts. Uh, I'm not sure if that was intentional or not but it came across that they were maybe using his likeness mm, unofficially if I could word it so gently. Unfortunately, another disappointing experience I had was with the At Games Legends Ultimate 4K pinball machine. Uh, being somebody that originally owned the first pinball machine that they released, Digital One, uh, this one is supposed to be the new flagship, new upgrades, 4K resolution on the play field. You got a new upgraded back box with secondary displays, not one like the original, but you got two. Uh, we got Adam's family artwork on it because they worked a deal in a license agreement with Zen Studios So they got access to all those classic Bally Williams games, which is great Unfortunately, this thing just wasn't ready to see the light of day. Um, they had a bunch of prototypes out there on display, but um, The Adam's family artwork that it is adorned and basically showcasing out to the world First thing you're natively gonna want to say is hey, let's check out Adam's family and unfortunately Adam's family was running an alpha build um, and definitely wasn't really ready for prime time. Uh, it was very laggy, there was delay in the flippers, there was delay in the plunger, but it definitely wasn't you know, the optimized experience that anyone was hoping for, whether it be Zen, at games, or a consumer, by all means. A um, Little bit disappointing for sure, because like I said, you got all these machines that are adorned with Adam's Family artwork, um, you got this sweet new deal with Zen Studios, and you got access to their amazing digital pinball games that they've created over the years, but this thing just wasn't ready software-wise, um, wasn't optimized, uh, will it be corrected down the road? I'm sure, but uh, when you're trying to put your best foot forward and kind of, you know, introduce yourself to new consumers, you definitely want it to be uh, performing at its best, and this definitely was not performing at its best. But I will say, it definitely looks, as far as aesthetic, much more improved over the original model. The new back box is a step in the right direction. Um, it comes with a topper. The topper looked to be just solid pressed wood. No lighting effects whatsoever. Me personally, I would get rid of that. Um, I would have had it on acrylic and I would have tried to make it, you know, like three dimensional where you have the Adams Family Mansion as one acrylic piece and then the artwork that they have as a secondary background, throw a little LED strip on it, call it good. It looks much nicer that way, but that's just me personally. Um, it did have haptic experience that was much improved over the original one. So I had two solenoids and the flippers and then the surround sound feedback. Albeit the surround sound feedback is an added accessory on top of the already higher sticker price of this new machine. Plus you gotta install it yourself, which is kind of hokey if you ask me. Um, if you're gonna manufacture it, the least you can do is install it. User interface has gotten better. It's got a kind of pinup popper. If you're familiar with virtual pinball and the pinup popper operating you know, user interface, it's got that kind of style user interface, but it's still way too in the weeds as far as the average person walking up to it and being able to understand a virtual pinball machine. Um, that's kind of always one of the biggest hurdles with that games is like they have a really kind of cool idea and as far as the execution um, on the software side of things, they really get in their way with firmware updates and making things overtly complex when it really does just need to be simplified. So not the best showing for at games or this machine as far as a grand reveal. They did have a prime real estate option right in front of the Stern booth, so they had lots of traffic, and I saw lots of people playing the machine, and I'll say I had a good experience playing everything but Adam's family on the machine, so I had other included tables on there that weren't designed by Zen Studios, but unfortunately, like I said, the flagship title, the one and only Zen Studios game that was on the machine, Adam's family, that, you know, covered the artwork of the machine, and it was the big, hey, you know, let's play this game was the worst experience unfortunately on that machine so as a whole not a good showing for Matt games on that one but you know we'll see what the future holds obviously i'm sure zen can whip it up into shape and if not you know they'll just go back to the drawing board and they'll have to figure something else out because you don't want to ship that to a consumer by any means uh please don't do that at games don't let that happen Guys, let me know your thoughts and opinions, what you saw, what you liked, what you hated at Pinball Expo if you were there, or if you just watched any of this coverage, let me know what you thought about Pinball Expo and what you saw. If you enjoyed the content, make sure you hit that like button, share this video with your friends if you found the information helpful, and as always, thanks for watching, guys. It really means a lot.